see it. Hi everyone. Today I want to show you how to create an XBMC database using your Synology NAS. This may may work on other uh, NASes, but uh, it's pretty much geared for the Synology. You're going to have to edit a file called sources.xml and I've already gone and created one for you and you'll be able to download that. I'll have a link in the show notes. Once you do download it, you're going to want to go and right click on it and say open with and go to notepad. There's two lines that we're going to edit in here. The first one is I want to add movies. So in order to do that, we're going to just name it, name it something. You can put, here you could put your disk station if you want, so you kind of know what where the source is coming from. So if you want to go ahead and type in 1812 or whatever the name of your disk station is, maybe DS, that way you'll know exactly where the, if you have more than one movie source. And the next line we're going to want to edit is right below it. And this first part where it says NFS, that's because I'm using network file share. So if you want to, if you've created NFS shares, then you'll want to have it say NS, uh, NFS. But if not, you're going to want to change that to SMB or whatever you're using, whether it be universal plug and play or. But the next part you're going to edit is you're going to put in your IP where I have all these pound symbols. I'm not going to edit this just so the the video will be a little bit quicker. The next part you're going to want to you're going to want to point it to where your movies are at. And this this should be about this is where I put my movies. So if yours is in a different location, you're going to have to change it. Then the next one, next line you you may need to edit is TV shows. I don't know if you host your TV shows on your NAS or not. If you don't, you can you could just uh, remove this line taking out the source here all the way down to the source with the backslash in it but if you do use it go ahead and edit it like you did above just you'll want to call it TV shows and you could change it to PS 1812 and go ahead and put in your IP like you did before and then again you're gonna want to show show it where your path to your TV shows is at and that may be where most people set it up. Once you're done with that you go ahead and you want to save it. Your next step is going to be to take and copy your sources.xml file that you just edited and you're going to paste it into the installation folder of XBMC and it's going to be into a specific folder called user data. Now this this file here it shows all the locations for the different operating systems of XBMC and I want to point out that Windows 7 I think the app data folder appears to be in a hidden folder so you're going to have to go into Windows 7 if you haven't already and enable show hidden files and folders in order to get to this user data folder in XBMC where you'll paste in the, the file that we just created sources.xml. Once you've done that we can move on to the next step. Next thing you're going to want to do is log into your disk station. I'm already logged in. Once you do log in go to control panel under network services go to web services and here you're gonna wanna enable my SQL so put a check mark there go ahead and hit apply if it asks you to enable the web station go ahead and do that as well and make sure you apply that mine are both applied so I'm gonna back out of here I also wanna point out that I'm currently on DSM 4.1. I haven't upgraded to DSM 4.2. It just came out two, two days ago. So I usually like to wait and see if, if the update breaks anything or has any bugs before I go and, and upgrade. 
So some of this may look a little bit different. I think they were talking about uh, changing some of the interface. Uh, we're pretty much done here so we can close the control panel. Next you're going to want to go and open your package center. And we need to install a package called PHP My Admin, and it's going to be in p Packages by Synology. If you haven't installed it already, it'll be in the Available tab, which I'm already already have displayed. Mine, I already have it in installed, so it's not going to be in here for me. And here's kind of what it looks like: PHP My Admin. Once you uh, have that you can go ahead and close your package center. Now that we've installed PHP My Admin, we're going to want to go ahead and load that. Go up to your start menu and load PHP My Admin. It'll look just like this icon I have here on my desktop. Now the first time you run it, it's going to ask for a username and that will be root, R-O-O-T, and there will be no password for it. Once you uh, successfully log in, you're going to want to go to the Users tab. And then we're going to go down to Add User. Here we're going to create up a username for the XBMC database. And I'm just going to call it XBMC. And I'm going to do the same for the password. We don't need a host. So for the password, I'm just going to put in XBMC. Now this should be fine since it's not on the internet, it's just on your home network amongst your own users at home. You're going to go down to next step, go to global privileges and click check all. And then go ahead and add user. I've already added this user so I'm just going to cancel this. And they, if, you've, if this is the first time you've run PHP My Admin, go ahead and click on the home button and it's going to give you under the general settings it's going to give you the option to change your password if you don't have any password I recommend putting some type of password in now we can go ahead and log out of PHP my admin it's this icon here with the door and the green arrow click on that and it'll ask you to log in you can just go ahead and say cancel and I'll give you a, a warning that access to, is denied Alright, our next step is to edit a file called advancedsettings.xml and I've already provided one for you guys. There will be a link in the show notes for this one. Once you download it, you can right click on it and open it with notepad. And we're going to want to go under video database here. We're going to want to change the host. This is where your IP address for your SQL server will be, which would be the for me it's the same as my disk station. Then you're going to go down to your user and if you did like I did and put in XBMC you can leave that as XBMC and then the password you want to edit that. I have XBMC there. Then the next database is going to be your music database and you want to go ahead and put in the correct IP address and then you, the correct username and password just like you did above. And this, what this file here is kind of doing is it's connecting our XBMC installation to our SQL server. So once you're done there, you can go ahead and go up to File and make sure you save. All right, finally, the last step here. We'll take our sources file, our sources XML file, and our advanced settings XML file that we created earlier. Go ahead and copy them. Now I'm on Windows 7, so I'm going to have to use this path to find my user data folder for XBMC. It's under Users, Your User for Windows, your Windows Profile User. And then this App Data folder here, I'm pretty sure it's hidden normally, unless you have hidden files and folders enabled. I'll put in a deal in the show notes on how to enable that. Then to roaming, scroll down, XBMC, and user data folder, and here we are. Now you can see I've already got my advanced settings XML file in here. 
they also have my sources.xml file in here but you would want to go ahead and paste them in here once you've done that we can go ahead and uh, fire up XBMC now the advanced one you shouldn't have one of them in here because by default there isn't one if you've gone and set up any sources in XBMC already you may already have uh, sources in here but you're gonna want to use the one that we created provided that you added all the sources and if there's some sources that you want to add later you can also do that in XBMC too okay I'm on my Windows 7 machine and I've just set up the database for XBMC on the Synology NAS we're gonna go ahead and just give you a, an example of what the database will do for you I'm gonna go up and go to one of my recently added videos and I'm just gonna Man. skip to uh, the they? middle here Stuff. I'm gonna pause it so I the sound doesn't uh, overtake me but uh, so what I found is that if you only go maybe you need to go 10% into the video for it to enable the resume function so if you're not say in a half hour show or a 22 minute show you're not uh, two minutes in it won't be able to resume or it doesn't do it for some reason so now I just went ahead and skipped forward to 8 minutes and 44 seconds on this Windows 7 machine I'm gonna log into my Macintosh and I'm gonna resume right where we left off here so I'll go ahead and stop this and I'll even log out so you can see that uh, this is my Windows 7 machine okay I have XBMC loaded on my OS 10 machine and instead of going up here to two and a half men in the recently added uh, episodes I'm gonna actually go down here to where it says recently added and you'll see two and a half men that's the episode that I played earlier and it has this little play button by it that that's an indicator that you've already started watching it and you didn't finish it now if you finish the episode it would have this nice little check mark so it's kinda nice and you know if you've watched it or not and of course that's another thing that your database keeps track of for you so we'll go ahead and see if this picks up where we left off before and it asks us if we want to resume at 8 minutes and 44 seconds and there you go so that's just kind of what the database does for you uh, quickly if you're new to XBMC I figured I'd show you this quick you go into system and then down to settings you can go to video and click on the library and I haven't set it up in this one but if you update the library on startup if you add new files you'll have to do a library update but this will do it every time you start it up so instead of having to manually go and update the library it'll do it automatically for you there and then this one will hide the pro progress of library updates I go ahead and do that it just uh, looks a little bit nicer when you don't know what's going on and that's pretty much uh, oh the clean library if you are somebody that deletes your TV shows or your movies if you hit this clean library button it'll go through and remove anything that's that the files not there anymore so then when you go to your library it won't show something that that you can't play alright I hope you guys like this uh, tutorial if you uh, did please uh, like and subscribe thanks for watching